Welcome to this series of short videos which will be accompanying my album, Invisible Music, folk songs that influenced Angela Carter. This is the album and if you have your own copy you'll know that there are 19 tracks. It's a mixture of readings from Angela Carter's work and my recordings of Traditional folk songs. I didn't write any of these songs. They're traditional folk songs that have travelled through communities being passed on, sometimes by word of mouth, like by learning orally. Sometimes people have learnt them by picking them up from collections such as Child's Collection of Ballads or Motherwell's. There's various sort of important compendia. And Carter was exposed to these songs because she was part of the folk scene in the 1960s. Her husband, Paul Carter, was a folk song collector and a sound engineer who used to travel around the countryside with a tape machine, collecting songs from country singers. So she experienced the folk revival at first hand, which is very exciting. And I believe she was really influenced by the songs that she heard. So the first reading is from her book, Several Perceptions, which is one of her earlier novels based in Bristol. And it recounts her encounter with a tramp who's playing air violin in the park. And I love it as conceptually, I just think it's beautiful. It's the idea that he can hear the music that he's playing in his, in his mind, but nobody else can. And the suggestion is that there's an uncertainty about whether he can actually play violin or not, but that he looks so convincing. And the reading talks about invisible music, which is where the title of this project comes from. I guess I've pinched it because I feel that Carter has threaded invisible music into her books. So the description that she gives us of this tramp playing his air violin is akin to what she's up to in her novels. She's threading invisible music into her writing. I heard it. That's why I became alerted to the fact that she might have been influenced by these songs. This tramp figure she wrote about again in an article. It was published in New Society magazine. So she'd based this tramp figure in the novel, fictitiously called Sonny, on a real character that must have been in Bristol at the time. Um, and the article's really fascinating. So it's, uh, it's an interesting little corner of this novel, and one which I feel illustrates a much wider theme across her work, which is this idea of music threaded into something else. 